How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash. And welcome to ML with Sir Ash. Today, we're going to discuss solving quadratic equation by completing the square. So, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool, clear math videos just like this. Hello, math learners. We are now in the third method for solving quadratic equations. This is still grade 9 mathematics, quarter 1, week 1 to 2. We have already discussed how to solve quadratic equations using extracting square root and factoring. So now, we are down to our third method which is all about completing the square. Now before we discuss how to solve quadratic equations using completing the square, we need to have an idea first about perfect square trinomials. Now, what is a perfect square trinomial? Let's consider these given examples. We have x squared plus 6x plus 9. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25. And we have x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now, why is these examples considered to be a perfect square trinomial? It's very easy, math learners. These given examples, when factored, they have identical factors. So for x squared plus 6x plus 9, the factors are x plus 3 squared. For x squared minus 10x plus 25, the factors are x minus 5 times x minus 5 or the quantity of x minus 5 squared. And finally, for x squared plus 12x plus 36, we have the factors x plus 6 times x plus 6 or the quantity of x plus 6 squared. Okay, let's continue. Now, what are the rules for completing the square? If we have two terms, x squared plus bx, in order for us to complete the square, we just need to get the half of b then squared. Again, get the half of b then squared. So, this is now the perfect square trinomial. If we try to factor this kind of given, we will have the quantity x plus b over 2 squared. Okay, now let us go to a clearer example. In the following perfect square trinomial, the constant term is missing. We have x squared plus 14x plus blank. Remember that to find the constant term, we will get the half of the coefficient of the linear term and square it. Okay. So, half of 14 is 7, and 7 squared is equal to 49. So, the number to be placed in our blank is 49. Okay, now, how about these examples? Let's create perfect square trinomials. We have x squared plus 20x plus blank. So, how do we do that? Half of 20 is 10. 10 squared is 100. Very good. Okay, another example. We have x squared minus 4x plus blank. Half of 4 is 2. The squared of 2 is also 4. So therefore, the answer is 4. Very good. Now, let's continue. x squared plus 5x plus blank. Now, what is the half of 5? Since 5 is an odd number, therefore, let's just consider the fraction 5 over 2. And the squared of 5 over 2 is... 25 over 4. Okay, now let us go to our discussion. Solving quadratic equations by completing the square. We will solve the following equation by completing the square. x squared plus 8x minus 20 is equal to 0. So, step 1, what you will do is you move the quadratic term and the linear term to the left side of the equation. Now, consider our arrow here. Our x squared and 8x is already in the left side of the equation. So what we will do here is we just need to transpose our minus 20 to the right side of the equation, giving us x squared plus 8x is equal to 20. After we have done that, we need to go to the second step. Find the term that completes the square on the left side of the equation, then add that term to both sides. So we make a space in the left side and the right side of the equation. So we need to complete the square in the left side of the equation. And this is the x squared plus 8x. 
So remember in our review in perfect square trinomial, we get half of 8, that is 4, and 4 squared or the square of 4 is 16. Therefore, we need to put 16 in this first blank and in this second blank. Okay. And now we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 20 plus 16. Easy, right? Now, let's continue to the third step. For the third step, we need to factor the perfect square trinomial on the left side. And then we will simplify the right side of the equation. So, if we factor x squared plus 8x plus 16, step number 4, take the square root of each side. So, we square root both sides of the equation, canceling our 2 here or our squared here and the square root side, giving us x plus 4 and the square root of 36 is plus minus 6 or positive and negative 6. Okay, and that is our result. Now, since we are not yet finished because we did not yet isolated our value of x, now what we will do here is we will simplify it by transposing our plus 4 in the left side to the right side of the equation, giving us negative 4 plus minus 6. Now, we don't need to have an answer that is like this because we can still simplify it if we solve them separately. So for step number 5, we will set up the two possibilities and solve. We have negative 4 minus 6 and we have negative 4 plus 6. So start here, negative 4 minus 6 is equal to negative 10. We have here in the second, negative 4 plus 6 is equal to positive 2. So our values for x in that given equation are x is equal to negative 10 and x is equal to 2. Now let's continue. Example number 2. Solve the following equation by completing the square. We have 2x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay, as you can see here, our quadratic term has a numerical coefficient that is greater than 1. Now, if this is the case, we need to simplify first our equation such that our quadratic term has a coefficient of 1. Okay, how do we do that? We divide the whole equation by 2. Okay, so step 1 move the quadratic term and linear term to the left side of the equation and the constant to the right side of the equation. So that will become 2x squared minus 7x is equal to negative 12. Then, for step 2, find the term that completes the square on the left side of the equation. Add that term to both sides, the same as earlier. But, there is a catch here. The quadratic coefficient must be equal to 1 before we complete our square. So, we must divide all terms by the quadratic coefficient first. How do we do that? So, as you can see here, we divide the whole equation by 2. So, giving us 2 divided by 2, that is 1. So, we only have x squared. Now, 7 divided by 2 cannot be because 7 is an odd number, giving us negative 7 over 2x. And then, for this side, on the right side, we have negative 12 divided by 2, that is negative 6. We have now the final equation here with the space okay so how do we get that space again we just need to get half of b then squared okay so what is one half of negative seven over two so in getting one half seven over two we just need to multiply one half to seven over two giving us seven over four then seven over four we will square it and then we have now the 49 over 16. So the value 49 over 16 will be placed in our spaces, in each side of the equation. Okay, like this. Now, let us continue. For step 3, we factor the perfect square trinomial on the left side and we simplify the right side of the equation. The factor for x squared minus 7 over 2x plus 49 over 16 is x minus 7 over 4 squared. Or, this can be read as the quantity of x minus 7 over 4 squared. Okay, like that. So, now in this right side of the equation, we will use LCD in order for the whole number and the fraction to be simplified. So, making our negative 6 become negative 96 over 16 plus 49 over 16. So, if we add negative 96 plus 49, we will have negative 47 over 16. Okay? And now, for the step 4, we... Cancel out our square root 
and the squared here in our left side of the equation and we square root the right side however negative 47 doesn't have any square root but 16 has so what is the square root of 16 that is 4 so giving us x minus 7 over 4 is equal to plus minus do not forget that square root of negative 47 over 4 now remember that if our radical expression is a negative that means it is an imaginary number so that is i so giving us if we transpose negative 7 over 4 here this will become positive 7 over 4 plus minus i square root of 47 over 4 now you can just simplify this by combining or by setting the denominator as 1 and then since 7 plus minus i square root of 47 cannot be solved separately now you can have this as your final answer all right so as you can see in this part of the equation we cannot apply factoring in this level all right let's continue now let's try to solve x squared plus 6x minus 8 by completing the square so as you can see the coefficient of our quadratic term is 1 so there is no need for us to divide the whole equation by a so let's continue so first is we transpose our constant term making our minus 8 become positive 8 okay then we add the space we will complete the square in the left side and we add on the right space whatever the number we have added in the left side so what is the half of 6 that is 3 and 3 squared is 9 so therefore we will add 9 both sides of the equation okay so that is the process so half of 6 and then squared that is 9 so we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 8 plus 9 now simplifying our right side and getting the factor of our left side we have the quantity x plus 3 squared okay is equal to 17 then step 4 we will square root both sides of the equation giving us x plus 3 is equal to positive negative square root of 17. Remember that 17 is not a perfect square. Therefore, we will just copy square root of 17. Then we will transpose our plus 3 in the left side to the right side, becoming negative 3 plus minus square root of 17. So as you can see, this example or this answer cannot be solved separately. So you can finish on this part of your solution. Congratulations! Alright, okay, let's continue. These are the last examples. We have 5x squared minus 10x plus 30 and we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 18 is equal to 0. Now, let's start first with the first given. We have 5x squared minus 10x plus 30. Now, since our quadratic term is higher, now since the coefficient of our quadratic term is higher than 1, then we will divide the whole equation by its coefficient so we divide the whole equation by 5 giving us x squared minus 2x plus 6 okay now we can transpose our constant term giving us x squared minus 2x is equal to negative 6 then we will add the space for our completing the square then we will get half of b which is 2 2 divided by 2 that is 1 1 squared is equal to 1 so we will add 1 to each side of the equation okay it becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 6 plus 1 now for the third step we will have the factors of the left side and then simplify the right side so by doing so we have the quantity x minus 1 squared is equal to negative 5 okay and then we square root both sides of the equation giving us x minus 1 is equal to plus negative or positive negative square root of negative 5. Since the radical expression is a negative, then we will use the imaginary number i. Okay, so we have now our final answer, 1, positive 1, because we transpose negative 1 here to the right side. So we have positive 1 plus minus i square root of 5. Now, again, in this part, we cannot add our two terms because they are not like terms therefore this will be our final answer okay now let us go to the second example 
3x squared minus 12x plus 18 is equal to 0. It is another example in which the coefficient of our quadratic term is higher or greater than 1. So therefore, we will divide the whole equation by its coefficient. So we divide the whole equation by 3, giving us x squared minus 4x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, by doing so, we will now start our step 1. We will transpose the plus 6, giving us x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 6. Then, we will add the space. We have x squared minus 4x plus space is equal to negative 6 plus space. Then, we will complete our square by dividing our b with 2 and we square our answer. So, half of 4 is 2 and the square of 2 is 4. Okay. So, we will put 4 in our space, giving us x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to negative 6 plus 4. In this matter, we will have to factor our left side of the equation and simplify the right side of the equation, giving us the quantity of x minus 2 squared is equal to negative 2. And then, for step 5, we will square root both sides of the equation, giving us x minus 2 is equal to positive negative square root of negative 2. And then for the final answer, we will just transpose our negative 2 in the left side. This one. We will transpose it here. And we will have the final answer as 2 plus minus i square root of 2. Because our radical expression is a negative, then it is another example of an imaginary number. So we have 2 plus minus i square root of 2. So, I hope you have learned our lesson for today. It's very easy, right? Though, we can say that it is very tedious. But don't you worry, there will still be a video about the discussion in solving quadratic equations. Okay, so now, this is the time that I will be giving you some exercises for you to try if you master this component C. Okay, so we have five examples here. We have x squared plus 2x minus 63 is equal to 0. We have x squared plus 8x minus 84 is equal to 0. We have x squared minus 5x minus 24 is equal to 0. We have x squared plus 7x plus 13 is equal to 0. And finally, we have 3x squared plus 5x plus 16 is equal to 0. Okay, I hope you have learned our lesson for today, math learners. This is still your free access math teacher, Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you and please subscribe, like, and share this video. God bless.